A confused market, no question. Why? Market's going up. All this data is coming out that is just ugly. What is going on? One, my stance has not changed on this. Still bearish. So, lots to talk about. Let's go. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First up, don't forget, click show more for additional information and links on today's video. Have a lot there. Also, if you're looking for a different opinion that of Wall Street and Big TV, and I know you are, please do consider subscribing. Wow, things have really changed. One, I hope everyone's being safe out there. Two, with everyone being home, our channel's exploding, almost 2,000 new subs just in the last month. So today, our agenda. As always, big charts. We're gonna go through that. Sector spotlights, are there some places to buy? You betcha. Next up, what keeps me up at night? Yes, there are some items right now. And our game plan to help you going forward. Let's go to the big charts. All right, first up, long-term view, that monthly chart. What do we see? Same thing, here's your trend line from 2009. Still broken. You see your relative strength declining. Most importantly, little zoom in there, momentum crossed over ugly, long-term still very much negative. Midterm or weekly view, you've actually had some improvement here. But again, you're still well below the 40 week average, which is what I look for. And then down here, crossover, big, big crossover, little baby button hook at the bottom there. I don't think it's too much today, but obviously we will continue to watch. So let's look at short term because this is what we're seeing obviously right now, the market's going up, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's look at a couple things here, okay? So first up, we have our standard chart. Down here, we have the volatility index, still above 30. Remember, above 30, non-investable. So what we have here on the line is, let me pull that down a little bit, is the Fibonacci retracement. Click up here for what that's about. But basically, you take your high, your low, and then you look for a retracement calculation. All right, what's happened is, which has happened in other bear markets, it's come back, okay? Now here, it broke above the 38% retracement, kind of normal. Then we got to the 50, okay? And you can see over here, we went down, we came back up, and then we went down again. But what's happened is, we broke above for a minute there, and then down again to, uh, yesterday, and today it's, I mean, literally on the line as of 9.50 on Thursday morning, so, Right now, that 50% retracement seems to be real important. The other thing is, when I look at the charts, there's more than one ways to look at it. So here, same chart, there's your death cross, you have a falling wedge, okay? Then you have, right, this bearish setup here, bearish wedge, and it's really defined, right? So here's your upper band, we'll call it. We tried to break through, we failed. We tried to break through, we failed, and then here's where we are right now. Now eventually, you know, these lines get tighter and there has to be a resolution. So really going to continue to watch that one. So long-term negative, mid-term negative, and also obviously right now, we're still in a downtrend here, even though we've had this pullback. We'll talk about that when we get into what keeps me up at night, but now, Let's go to our sector spotlight. All right, first up, everybody's favorite hard asset, gold, right? Everyone loves gold. I love gold. I love gold. Who doesn't love gold? Now, again, we've talked about this. We've been fortunate. We started getting into gold back in 2018, and you've had surges, right? You started here, you went up, obviously you consolidated a little bit, boom, there's another surge. Consolidation, that was cycle three, surge, okay, now this 
what happened here. This was at the beginning of this bear market that we started when there was a sell-off and people need to raise cash, okay? We actually got out of it for just a minute or so, actually a couple weeks, and once we saw that trend coming back and volatility, volatility is everything, price volume volatility started coming down again. We started adding, 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 and then yesterday we added again on the pullback. This particular chart doesn't update till the end of the day. So really like gold right now. The other thing is I have down here, which is gold relative to who performs better, right? Gold relative to the S&P. Okay, there's your third, and then boom, look at that. That's called outperformance of gold. One of the reasons why we continue to like it. Next up, not exciting, not sexy, just kind of your plotter. Your plotter here, US dollar. Again, another chart that's not gonna open, uh, update to the end of the day, but the US dollar. Okay, what we see here is that there's your third cycle, cycle three, right? Kind of goes sideways a little bit, right? Had a nice little surge, but then we pulled back when this whole mess started. We started tiptoeing in, and then we started adding right here, like gold right now, why there's, excuse me, dollar. There's a dollar shortage around the world. So really like gold as we go forward. And is there anything else that's peaking right now, peaking out at us? Let's start with consumer staples, okay? You would think that to be an obvious choice. You have consumer discretion, consumer staples. Consumer discretion are high-end items, big TVs, jewelry, et cetera. Obviously, that's not being sold right now, but staples, staples of what we need every day, everybody heading to the grocery store, et cetera. Okay, so here's your daily chart. We've seen a surge, and right there is your 50-day moving average. So I'm looking at this, got in a little piece last week, but wanna see what happens before I make a bigger commitment. When you look down below, obviously you can see that. That's pretty nice. That's momentum, right? Momentum of that sector going up, that's a good thing. So gonna tiptoe, let's see what happens, see if it can hold its own. Now, healthcare, I'm bringing this up for obvious reasons right now in this crisis. And you look at today, you had a nice little breakout today already, okay? Now, healthcare as an index, I'm probably not gonna do it. Why? Because healthcare, you can do really well in healthcare, really bad in healthcare, depending on the sector right now, okay? Because of what's happening with this crisis, so, I think that overall, healthcare, I've always liked healthcare, obviously baby boomers with this crisis, but you're gonna have to be a little more selective and that's gonna come through with some of the uh, individual names, which for compliance purposes, can't give away here. Sorry, folks. So next up, let's talk about treasuries. I usually break them out, but they are part of my sector spotlight. Why? Because treasuries is a good place to be. Now, just like gold, you see treasuries shot up there when things got a little bit ugly at the beginning of this crisis. That was a great buying opportunity. So same as gold, because you got to look at how things work here, okay? Treasuries go down, gold does well, okay? Deflation happens, US dollar does well. We'll talk about that in a second. So we do like Treasury's been slowly nipping at it as it's gone down. This one in particular has an updated, don't know why, but Treasury's continue to come down like that long term. Next up, what keeps me up at night? <gasps> All right, what keeps me up at night? Well, obviously there's a lot going on right now, and I thought this one was a little bit funny. I was speaking with a client the other day, and I asked them, have you been watching my videos? And we've been sending private videos to clients with exact moves we we're making. And it was like, well, I mean, they're a little harsh, but I understand you're just giving us the facts. And that's tough because as you see here, right? Comforting lies, stay the course, buy and hold, right? Old wall, big wall street and big TV. Like I always talk about in my opening and there I am over there, unpleasant truths. I surely don't wanna be negative, okay? But I'm here to tell you what exactly is going on. 
So first up, let's talk about all this news because now we've seen this market come back. There's three cycles of a bear market. You go down, you come up, and then you go down on fundamentals over time. I mean, look at all these headlines. Be prepared for the profitless coronavirus recovery. New York manufacturing hits a record low, negative 78, right? IMF slashes growth forecast to be like 1930, right? Worst recession. Ah, our boy Jimmy, Jim Boy Kramer. Best week since 1938. That was last week. But then look down here at the headline. More than 16 million Americans have lost jobs. God, that's awful. As of today, 21 million. It's amazing that this market's grinding the way it is, right? So, and again, mortgage forbearance. I could go on. There's so many, so many bad headlines and the market continues to go up. Why? Well, because we're going to talk about that, right? We know that. Now, here's why. Federal debt, right? My favorite. Not really. So the debt, the Fed has stepped in in a big way. We know we were going down a little bit. We are now over $6 trillion, okay? And it's growing every day between $50 and $90 billion a day. That is just crazy, okay? The Fed, just like last time, and let me be clear, just like last time, they're bound out Wall Street. Remember, uh, Chairman Powell, Jerome Powell, P.E. Powell, private equity, worked at Carlisle Group, okay? He's tied in with all of these guys on Wall Street. Then you got Munchen, hello, former Goldman Sachs, right? And you're seeing all this these problems with the Treasury and the Fed coming together. It's illegal. The money that they're throwing out and they're giving it to all the big banks, they're giving it to all the big companies. Is America really gonna get some of this? We're gonna talk about that because remember Occupy Wall Street. This, what they're doing right now to me, is actually worse, leaving out the small guy. What, you know, here, one of the people I follow, how is Federal Reserve, how is bailing out companies with crappy balance sheets and below investment grade ratings? So what they started doing last week was buying high yield and junk. Absolutely illegal according to their mandate. Something is gonna come from this, I'm telling you. The Fed has made it clear it will not tolerate prudent and responsible investing. I said this in the last video, they're doing exactly what they did in the last crisis to get this thing going again. And they're giving it to the same people. One of my favorites, having a view on an epic day of crony socialism. Okay, MMT, we've heard a lot about this. Everything going on right now, crony socialism, PE Powell bailing out private equity, equity and high yet high yield debt. And I thought it was great last week. I not even gonna pretend to do his uh, his name, but U.S. shouldn't bail out hedge funds billionaires. I'm going to put a link to that video on CNBC. It's shocking and also refreshing. So, cycles. Here's the thing. We are, remember, we'll talk about earnings in a second. That's a lagging indicator. We are in cycle four, growth slowing, clearly deflating, clearly dovish, markets starting to deflate, and we're heading into deep cycle four coming up. First up, let's take a look. How about this? Auto sales, worst month over month sales ever, ever. How about this one? Ever, worst retail, well look, perfect. My line's still there, okay? But you can see it, right? Worst ever month over month. So let's talk about the Fed, all right? Everyone knows here locally, my wife bought this consignment shop a year or so ago. Nice little small business. She went for the EDIL, okay? Uh, economic development, whatever, okay? She only went for $10,000 hoping to cover rent during this crisis. She just got her money, 10, 10. She went for 10, she got two. She got $2,000. Her monthly rent is double that, okay? Figure it out, folks. You're hearing all this stuff from the government. Where's the money going? Is it really going to the small business owner? I'm telling you right here, based on my circumstance, the answer is not. That's why one of the webinars I went on this week, they said they're looking at a 30%, 30% of re retail and restaurants going away. 
Here's your PPI and CPI deflation, right? That's why the US dollar. Earnings, can't make this up folks. Look at, whoa, hello. Look at those numbers. Now, early, 34,498. Sales growth, minus 34%. Wow. <clears throat> and that's not even a full month, okay? Lagging indicator, this, I mean, this really has an opportunity to be the worst ever. And I'm not trying to be negative, I'm trying to be realistic. So game plan going forward, when will this end? Well, here's one of the problems, okay? I've been on more conference calls, web calls, genealogists or ephthalmologists, right? So Singapore, if you're not, haven't heard, is having a big second wave right now. And they're crazy locked down, way more so than the US. So one, we don't know until this thing slows down and if we have a better testing or curing. I'm not getting into that, we all know about that. Next up is, Average, average recession, you might have to pause, take a snapshot. Average recession duration is 20 months. We've had lower, we've had higher, okay? So it's a long-term game plan. I say this every time. What's your number? How much can you handle in losses? This is not over, folks, okay? Buckle up, be smart. You know, one of the things we talked about there is some of the allocations. Find opportunities downside. Watch that VIX, follow us for updates on Facebook. We have links below. I'm able to converse there. Can't do so on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.